Welcome back to Godot 101. This is part seven, and we're going to talk about using custom signals to communicate from one node to another. All right, let's get started. So in the last video, we made the player able to run around and pick up these gems. And now we want something to happen when those gems pick up are picked up. We want to increase the player's score and we might want to do some other things. But as I said at the end of the last video, that means we want the gem when it detects that it's been uh, when it's been touched here, when the area enter and it sees the player, we want the gem to tell the main scene something. But the main script is running over here on the main node, and the gem is way over here in this tree, and it's being instanced inside the game gem container. So there's two ways of going about this, and one of them is the one that a lot of beginners tend to take. So if you see a lot of uh, beginner code in Godot, you'll see this happening a lot. And here's what they do. They go, well, we need to talk to the main node. And if the gem is going to be inside the gem container, that means I need to go up one, two levels. So I need to find this node in the tree. And so they will do something like get node dot dot slash dot dot, right? Go two levels up. And on that node, run, let's just make a command called we'll make a function called gem grabbed. And then over on the main, you go and you add that uh, function. So we add gem grabbed, and we'll just have that take, we'll just have that add to the player's score, and we'll just print it out for now, just to see that it's working. And so this is gonna work, and see when we grab it there, it's printing out the score. You know, that's fine. Now our, our gem is talking to our main node, but the problem is that this is very brittle and easy to break because what happens if I decide to change the structure of the tree, of the main tree here, then maybe it's three levels up or it's changed. It also means that when you run Remember, we can run the gem scene as its own scene, right? We can just run this scene. But when you run this scene by itself, the gem is the root node. So there's no there's no node two levels up. So if you have any code that does things like this, it's going to break if you try and run the scene by itself. And for a lot of scenes, you want to be able to do that, right? When we were testing the player, we just ran the scene by itself so we could see if we could move around. So you want to be able to, you don't want to break the individual scene functionality. And so you want to do this a little differently. And the way to do that in Godot is using something called signals. So the gem here is a perfect example of how to do this. So on the gem, what we're going to do, and get rid of this calling of the node above. And what we're going to do is just like we were able to use the signals over here that are built into the area 2D, we can actually define our own signals. So we're going to define a signal called gem grabbed, just using the signal keyword. And when the gem gets grabbed, we're going to emit that signal. Okay, so now whenever a gem gets grabbed, it's going to emit that signal. And then we can tell our main script to watch for that signal. So what we can do is when we spawn the gem, we're going to take this gem that we spawned and we're going to say g.connect. We want to connect the, this gem's gem grabbed signal uh, to, oops, to a function on the main. And that function we're going to call it on gem grabbed, just sticking with the standard uh, Godot naming scheme of the on for uh, responding to signals. So we change this to being called on gem grabbed. 
Oops. On gem grabbed. And then now we can run this and we will have the same kind of functionality there. But now it's a lot more flexible because we're using the node's signal to define what we want to do when that node tells us something. So we can respond to the, to the gem signal. And this is a much more flexible and robust way of doing that functionality. And you should try and use signals whenever you need to, whenever you need to communicate from one scene to another. And especially, especially if you ever find yourself doing that get node dot dot. If you find yourself doing that, you're probably going to get yourself in trouble later on and you want to find a way to do it with a signal instead. Okay, well now we have our score increasing and we want to display that on the screen now. I don't want to be printing it in the console. So let's add a, we're going to add a control node. And this control node is going to be called HUD, heads up display. This control node is going to contain all of our all of our displays of information, score, game over, anything like that, stuff that we want laid on top of the screen, basically. And we're going to use that to put those things in. Now I want this HUD to be the size of the screen. So I'm going to have the control. Now, working with control nodes, uh, they have anchor points. And anchor points are what part of the parent node you want to attach that side of the control node to. So I'm going to change this to begin, begin, and end, end. So, so, whatever, so whatever coordinates I put those sides out are going to be relative to those ends, beginning and end. And so if I go down here to margins, see the top, the left is zero, the top is zero. If I change the right to zero, and the bottom to zero. Now it's the same size as the parent node. And we don't want to accidentally grab that and drag it around. So let's lock that. Okay, so the only thing we want to show in the HUD right now is the score. So we're going to add a label node. And we're going to call that score label. And a label node is very simple. It's just a node that can display text. And so you can type here in the the text property is the one that shows contains what you want to see on the screen. So there you can see some text in pretty small font. And grabbing the label and resizing it doesn't change the font size of the text. Uh, to do that, you have to either go down here and change the scale. Right? We could scale this node up and have bigger, bigger text on it. Or we could use a specific font. You can go in here and load a specific font. I don't have any fonts ready. We're going to stick with the default font for now. We just want to see this score showing up on the screen. So let's just set that starting text to 0. That's our score at first. And then in our script, we're going to update the score label whenever the score changes. So we will grab the score label. So on ready score label is get node. And this is under the HUD score label. Okay, and then here we just do score label dot set text and we want that to be the score and that should be that so now if we play we can see our score going up all right that'll do it for this time around i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next video